All right, Alexander, we have got real quid pro quo here, and it is between the United States and Ukraine, between former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden and former Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko. We have had uh, audio leaks now, phone conversations between Kerry and Poroshenko and Biden and Poroshenko. And um, look, it's I, I mean, there's no there's no damning new revelations or information that or information that has come out. But the phone leaks and they were leaked by uh, Ukrainian MP Andrei Derkach. He leaked those phone records, those phone conversations. I mean, what they do show is real quid pro quo, Alexander. And they show that both Kerry and Biden we're strong arming Poroshenko to get rid of Shokin in order to benefit or in order to get Shokin off the tail of Burisma and benefit Hunter Biden, not only Hunter Biden, Devin Archer, who was partners with Christopher Hines, who is the stepson, yeah, the stepson of John Kerry. So, I mean, this is. We have it on we have it on video file from that famous YouTube video where Biden says, I got him fired, man. So, you know, one billion and I got him fired. And now we have the audio recordings between a vice president, a U.S. president, a secretary of state, a vice sorry, vice president, Ukrainian president, secretary of state, Ukrainian president, where they're saying fire Shokin or we won't give you a billion dollars. Yes. Well, yeah. what I was going to say, I, mean, I, I was I was reading all of this. I have to say there's two things I want to say. First, first of all, the content of these conversations is extraordinary i mean it it, it reads like an episode out of the uh, godfather or the untouchables i mean it really does i mean if you if you look at you know read the kind of things that were being said i haven't listened to any audio tapes but just just the actual words they are really quite extraordinary i mean you know you have uh, uh, you have Biden and Kerry, and they're clearly ganging up on Poroshenko. And Poroshenko, who's no softy, let's be very clear about that. I mean, you know, he's, uh, uh, you know, dithering and groveling. And, you know, he's clearly scared. And, you know, they're saying to him, you know, you've got to do this. You've got to sack this guy, shock in. And if you don't, you know, you have all sorts of consequences will follow. But if you do, well, you know, we'll look after you. We'll give you a billion dollars. I mean, it's, as I said, I mean, really, I mean, it, it, it is straight out of a gangster movie. I, I, you know, I'm sorry to say that, but that's that's how it read to me. But there's one particular point that you said, which I don't actually completely agree with, which is that we didn't actually get anything out of these calls, which we didn't know. I think we did get one thing out of these calls, and I think it's important that it's been much overlooked, and that is that Poroshenko repeatedly says, but Shokin hasn't been accused of anything. There's no evidence that he's corrupt. We've looked into whether or not he's corrupt. We haven't found any evidence that he's corrupt. And Biden and Kerry still go on twisting his arm, uh, uh, you know, offering him inducements, doing, as I said, the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Don Vito Corleone act with him and uh, the Sopranos act, if you prefer. And and interestingly, they never come back and say to Poroshenko, well, look, you know, we know he's corrupt because he's done A, B, C, D types of, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's taking bribes here. He's done bad things there. They don't actually set out the way they think Shokin was corrupt. So, I, you know, I think that's interesting because presumably if they knew that he was corrupt and if they had that information that he was corrupt, they would have responded they would have come back to Poroshenko and they would have said this, you know, they would have said, you know, Petro, you can't keep this utterly corrupt official in place. We are, uh, you know, the United States, we're supporting you, we're giving you all the help you need. But the fact is, this person has done all these bad things and these are what those bad things are and we can't help you uh, uh, whilst you keep him on because there's a risk he might run off with all the money that isn't that isn't how these conversations read at all 
and you say a, a quid pro quo, well, it's clearly a quid pro quo. I mean, absolutely real quid pro quo. I mean, what happened with Trump and Zelensky was not a quid pro quo. This is a quid pro quo, but it's more than that. As I said, I think it's straightforward and brutal bullying, actually. It's, it, it has, as I said, a, a, um, a, um, a quality of extortion about it. It, yeah. Not, not, not to put too fine a point on it. I mean, that's that's as I said, why it gives me this sort of feeling that it's like a gang, like something out of a gangster movie. Yeah, if I could just uh, clarify, you're right. The, getting it, get, listening to Biden and Poroshenko discuss Shokin and Poroshenko saying multiple times there's no corruption. I agree with you. That's it's it's great to hear that. I, my point is that, and I guess maybe let me clarify my statement. The mainstream media, the fake news was constantly mm. telling us that mm. Shokin was corrupt, right? Yeah. We knew. We knew and our viewers knew all along as we've been covering this story extensively yeah. that Shokin was not corrupt. And Shokin himself has, mm. has made statements under oath, I believe, in a court yeah. in Vienna where yeah. he's laid out exactly what happened to him. Mm. And there was no corruption involved. So for us, I guess it just, it just vindicates our reporting. But we knew all along this oh, was a case of corruption. No, there was no, no. corruption to, to be had. No, I on mean, Shokin's it, part. On I mean, Shokin's this is part. it. On Shokin's part. I mean, this is the point. I mean, you know, we, we're always being told about what a corrupt man Shokin is. And you know, let's be very clear. Shokin is very close to Poroshenko, and Poroshenko is as corrupt as anybody in Ukraine is. So I'm, you know, I'm not saying that he's a man with completely clean hands, but we're always being told about what a corrupt official Shokin is. But what's the proof? Where's the evidence? Where, where is this corruption that people are talking about? This it's never been detailed in the media. I've never seen anybody say, "Well, Shokin used to take bribes from you know this oligarch, that oligarch did this thing which was wrong, that which which is wrong." It's all been just a, a a, a statement, an absolute statement of this, which has never been supported or substantiated to any degree. And interestingly, and it's very interesting that in these conversations between Poroshenko, Poroshenko is continuously insisting that this man is not corrupt. Poroshenko maybe is not the best person, you know, witness to that, but that's what he's saying. And Biden and Kerry, who, let us remember, are supporting Poroshenko, they never come back and say, well, we can prove that he is corrupt because he did this, that, and the other. They never do that. As I say, it's all about getting rid of him. They're putting huge pressure on Poroshenko to get rid of him. They're twisting Poroshenko's arm. They're, as I said, to me, it looks like extortion. It also looks like, frankly, bribery, if you like, because, you know, they're, they're holding out this $1 billion that, uh, you know, Ukraine is going to get. And, of course, they get what they want. And neither of them, interestingly, in either of these conversations, touch on the point which you opened this conversation with. Neither of them uh, say, you know, uh, 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 neither of them shows any concern about the fact that their son and stepson are involved in a company which Shokin is investigating. And neither of them seem to consider whether it's even appropriate, given that situation, that conflict of interest. I mean, it clearly is a conflict of interest, whether they should be involved in these conversations with Poroshenko at all, whether it is even appropriate for them to be conducting these sort of conversations. I mean, I have to say, it looks like a gang up, and it does look like a gang up done to protect certain people, Burisma, first and foremost, and of course, the members of their own family who are on this board. Exactly, exactly. Let me, uh, let me read you a statement, an excerpt from that phone conversation, Alexander, just to paint the picture. It was, as you said, it was a gang up. It was a tag team quid pro quo. Kerry would lay the groundwork and he would, you know, pressure Poroshenko, get rid of Shokin or you're not going to get the billion. And then Biden would come in afterwards 
and he'd start making phone calls with Poroshenko, and he would just pile on the pressure. So that's the scenario as I get to the statement. I agree with you also, Alexander. Just a quick side note. Poroshenko comes out looking like a groveling, weak, out of just a, just a fool. I mean, he complete disgrace. Absolutely. Complete disgrace. He looks so weak and pathetic. Listen to all our viewers. I'm going to put a link for mm. those audio calls in the description box, and you'll listen to just how pathetic and how groveling and just how how much of a simp Poroshenko looks here as he's mm. kissing, <laughs> kissing uh, Biden's. You know what? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the this is the meat of the of the uh, audio leak, Alexander. And so we pick it up from Kerry when he's done with Poroshenko and then some months afterward, afterwards where Biden comes in. And I'm taking this excerpt via Zero Hedge. Later in the leaked audio on February 18, 2016, less than three months after the Kerry conversation, Poroshenko delivers some quote, positive news. Quote, yes, I met with General Prosecutor Shokin, says Poroshenko. And despite of the fact that we didn't have any corruption charges, we don't have any information about him doing something wrong, I specifically asked him, no, it was day before yesterday, I specifically asked him to resign. In a, as a position as a state person, and despite of the fact that he has a support in the power. And as a finish of my meeting with him, he promised to give me the statement on resignation. And one hour ago, he bring me the written statement of his resignation. And this is my second step for keeping my promises. To which Biden replied, quote, I agree, end quote. Well, there you go. Al Capone and uh, who, uh, and and his victim. I mean, that's how it looks. That's that's how it comes across to me. I keep my promises. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure that there are all sorts of people who, you know, have been on the receiving end of this kind of pressure who uh, who recognize the language in those words. But this is the president, supposed president of an independent country. What independent country is Ukraine when its president talks like that? He says, he says that there is no evidence of corruption against Shokin. He says that Shokin is supported by the parliament. He nonetheless comes along, says, I've got good news for you. I'm keeping my promises. I've sacked him. What kind of a president does that? A proper president, a true president, of an independent country comes along to Biden, Kerry, and says, get lost. Yeah. Poroshenko is not that. That is not what this is all about at all. So, yes, a quid pro quo, certainly. But as I said, extortion also. And it, it reveals who in this situation has the power and who's abusing that power. Because, of course, Biden and Kerry are not treating Ukraine here as an independent country. No, Biden was the de facto ruler. We've said it many times. Absolutely. Biden Absolutely. was the de facto ruler of Ukraine. And I'm just going to stress it one more time, Alexander. They were protecting Burisma. Of course they Both, were. It's no coincidence that you have Kerry, John Kerry, and Joe Biden pressuring Petro Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine, given the fact that it's Biden's stepson and his stepson's best buddy and business partner, Devin Archer, mm. and of course... Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, who are directors, board directors of Burisma. Absolutely. And I mean, Shokin was investigating them. That says it all. It says it all. I mean, it's absolutely, I mean, you know, to, to talk about a conflict of interest here is to, is to make this look respectable in a way that, I mean, you know, uh, you, know the, you know, maybe they overlook the fact that there was a conflict of interest. They call, the reason these calls happened is precisely because Biden Hunter Biden and Devin Archer were involved with Burisma. They wouldn't have called in any other way, any for any other reason. I mean, let's remember again 
there is no evidence against Shokin at all. No evidence of corruption, that is to say, against Shokin at all. Maybe, maybe he has got things to explain, but that's not what that what this these calls are about. That's absolutely not what these calls are about. What these calls are about is that they didn't want shock in there. They wanted someone else in. They brought in Lutsenko, Yuri Lutsenko, who actually does have a well-known and well-established history of corruption in order to get these investigations of Burisma dropped. That's what this is all about. And that's what these telephone calls show. It's clear to me. I mean, you know, all you have to do is read the extracts. And, well, you say you've listened to them. I haven't actually listened to them myself, but I'm, you know, the extracts tell tell their own story. I mean, as I said, th this is not a pre the president of an independent country speaking to the officials of an independent country who may have, you know, legitimate concerns. This is, this is a, a, a gangster pileup. That's what it is. <laughs> wow, what an amazing uh, leak that was. All right, Alexander Vercurse, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on that notifications bell. Smash that like. And also look for us on iTunes and on SoundCloud for an audio copy of this video. And please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star your donation really helps us out a lot. And please go to the Duran shop, pick up some merchandise, some magic mugs, polo shirts, t-shirts. I think you've got a mug right there, Alexander. I certainly do. I've got I've got this beautiful mug, which is to some extent recently become my more default mug because it's it's got the it, it, it's so it's just an elegant one. But they're all great. Every one of our mugs is absolutely amazing to look at. Uh, and, you know, I do switch them around regularly, but this is the one that I seem to have when I'm doing the Duran show. But they're all phenomenal mugs. They're beautifully made. They're strong. They're elegant. They've got this wonderful luster. The body has this wonderful, the porcelain body has this wonderful luster, this amazing sort of glaze. It's the, the, the feedback we're getting from our viewers who, who buy them is phenomenal. They just love them. And they are the best mugs in the world. I say that. I've said this many times now. I'm the world expert on the subject. I've drunk more cups of tea than you know most people could possibly even imagine. And I've been drinking tea all my adult life and into my school years. So I should know. I've been through scores and hundreds and thousands of mugs. And these are, without any qualification, the best. I would add, just to show how good they are, not a crack, not a chip, not a sign of discoloration, not a single mark. And believe me, these mugs are very heavily used in the Mercury's home. So that tells you what exceptional mugs these are, the best mugs in the world. And you get them from the Duran in our shop. And it's not the only things you will find. As Alex said, in our shop, you will also find the best shirts, Certainly the best T-shirts, like the one I'm wearing now, which is an absolutely amazing, wonderful, short-sleeved T-shirt, 100% cotton. Again, incredibly durable, incredibly comfortable to wear. And, of course, it's got the double-headed eagle of the Durand there. But we also have long-sleeved T-shirts and V-neck shirts. And, of course, we have our simply phenomenal and amazing polo shirts, which are the best polo shirts you will find anywhere. They are amazing and wonderful polo shirts, tremendously comfortable, exceptionally stylish, wonderful to wear in every conceivable situation where you might even ever imagine that you want to wear a polo shirt. And you will find them in our shop, along with other great things like hats and hoodies and stickers and amazing ebooks on subjects like Russiagate or Ukraine Gate, which is the topic of this program, also about Epstein and Brexit and even the oil price issue. So all of these things, all these wonderful things are there in our shop. They're, 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 you support us at the Duran by buying them and you'll be the great owner, the happy owner of these wonderful things if you own them. So don't hold back, come to our shop, buy these great things, have these extraordinary mugs, 
have these wonderful shirts, have our wonderful ebooks and our other things, and Alex will tell you how. Just go to the Duranshop.com. You'll find the link in the description box down below. Alexander Berkers, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.